Okay, wow, this is a very, very big turnout. So uh, thank you all for coming. Um, you know, it's, um, it's great to see so many of you here and, uh, you know, old colleagues and friends and peers. So, um, yeah, fantastic. Um, my name's Sangra. I'm a Regional Project Controls Manager with John Holland, so looking after projects in the Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania region. Um, and today, uh, this presentation is going to focus on um, specifically earned value management and how we implement that on our projects. Um, so just a little bit about me, I'll whiz past this. Um, I've been in engineering and construction for about 12 years now, and the bulk of that has been in project controls, um, earned value management, risk, and, as well as systems implementation. Um, so I've had a, you know, been lucky enough to get a, 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 you know, a lot of experience in infrastructure, building, um, defence, rail, and oil and gas and mining, as well as utilities, um, ranging from the very small to the very large. Um, and, and the focus for me has, has you know, been around the implementation and execution of you know, project controls, earned value management systems, processes and methodologies. So I'm an engineer by background, um, but you know, fell in love with project controls and you know, 12 years later, here I am. Um, so we're talking about earned value today. And you know, um, a lot of us have been around project controls for a long, long time. And you know, we, you know, we, we hear different definitions of earned value. And, and really, you know, in its essence, you know, what is it? Um, and effectively, it's, it's an objective assessment of the value of work completed to date. So it's no more complex than that. And it doesn't need to be any more complex than that. So an objective assessment of the value of work completed to date. And basically, the maths is really simple in earned value. It's essentially a budget times that percent complete. And now that can be for a particular, you know, cost code or an activity or a project. Um, it's no more difficult than that. Um, however, there is certain considerations and certain things we need to make sure, um, you know, that we have in place so that that percent complete part of that equation is as objective and as precise as possible. So we'll go through that in this presentation today. So. Again, you know, what is earned value? Well, earned value is a way to capture a project's scope, um, express its progress um, in fixed unit as, as dollars or money. It can be man hours as well, uh, but in this example and in this presentation, I'll use money as the, the common unit or the common thread. Um, we relate it back to the cost budget for a particular activity or a cost code or um, the project, and we phase it over a period of time. So when that's going to be um, you know, done when the work's going to be done um, and, and we phase that over time. So we, we combine three elements of the project management triangle there, which is a scope, time and cost, and we bring them together in the one platform. And, and what are we really looking at um, month in, month out? Well, we're comparing our value and our cost. So, you know, what was my budgeted cost of work performed? And what is my actual cost to date for that work? So I can compare my cost performance um, based on those two parameters. And essentially, I'm also comparing my earned value or what I've achieved um, against what I plan to do for that same period. So compare my budgeted cost of work performed against my budgeted cost of work planned. And I'm looking at things in a project perspective from a volume of work, not specifically the critical path, because I want to make sure that from a volume of work's perspective, am I meeting those planned targets month in, month out? And that's really important to really see how far we've achieved so far in the project and, of course, better understand the challenge ahead. So, so those are the two things we look at. Um, so why do we do it? Um, well, effectively, you know, a, a really robust and you know, strong earned value management system you know, provides us with early warning. So it's a really good early warning tool um, for developing project issues. And you know, we're, we're all trying to, in this, in this field, in project controls, we're all trying to be proactive and not reactive. So provide you know, proactive management for our projects and you know, have the time to optimize what we're doing. So provide that project optimization. You know, we're trying to drive achievement of progress and, and you know, progress volume month by month. So, you know, see how much we've achieved month in, month out for our project. And we're trying to integrate those three elements, so scope, cost and time, all, on the one, all in the one platform to really provide an objective measurement of the work performed for our project. And, you know, essentially why, why we are here and why we exist is to provide that time and cost assurance to our project leadership, to executive leadership um, and to the client as well. Um, and earn value when it's done well is a really good way to provide that time and cost assurance. We're also trying to provide an independent, independent assessment of our forecast um, for our cost code or for our project, you know, based on the cost performance and progress to date. So we can use earn value and the metrics that we derive from earn value to really give us an independent assessment of how we're going in terms of our final forecast cost. 
And most importantly, we're, we're, you know, earn value, an effective earn value management system, you know, really helps to eliminate those project surprises that come, you know, particularly in the last 20% or the t last 10% of the projects. So it's all about early warning and, and having the time to act on that. So our approach at John Holland in terms of setting up a robust earned value management system is firstly we look at, you know, when, we, when we're awarded a project, we look at effectively establishing a robust work breakdown structure as well as a cost breakdown structure. So when we establish those, uh, those two elements, we've got effectively um, the building blocks that we need to start to set up the earned value management system. And it's really important that we integrate that with both program and the cost estimate because the cost estimate gives us a, a level of detail which, which forms our baseline budget and our baseline program gives us all of our activities in the project and also the start and end date information for those activities. So that's really important in the time phasing aspect of, of what we're doing in terms of an earned value management system. We're also trying to leverage existing information from the project, um, firstly to set up the earned value management system and then to maintain the earned value management system. So, you know, every project across John Holland has a baseline cost estimate, you know, has a baseline program. Uh, you'll have a cost code structure typically as well um, and also a, a target program. And, and we're also measuring the work that we're doing on site. So when we leverage our existing information, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not, um, you know, uh, reinventing any data. What we're trying to do is we're trying to pull together all the existing information that's on the project, bring time, cost and scope all together in the one platform to really give us an objective way to measure our cost and schedule performance. And based on that objectivity, it's really important that we choose objective measures to how we measure our progress because that percent complete in that earned value equation, that's really important. We want to be as objective as possible in the measurement of our progress. So, um, and the way that we do that on all of our projects at John Holland is through quantity measurement. So really measuring the work that we're doing on site, um, you know, understanding our physical progress. So it's not a percentage complete in P6. It's not a uh, you know subjective percent complete assessment. It truly is, you know, a commodity based uh, way of tracking physical progress. So typically, what we would have is we'd have a, a cost breakdown structure on a job. So a few cost code uh, cost codes there, and we would break out each individual cost code into a handful of measurable activities, and that's really key uh, driving commodities. Um, and we would measure um, our actual quantity every month um, against our final forecast quantity and how much we think we, we, we will be at the end. So we're measuring our quantities every month and it is a, it is a commodity based process as well. So you can see there in that um, flow chart, we've got input, so it can be labor, plant, material or subcontracts. Um, we have an activity or a process. So for example, you know, uh, you know, concrete pour, and then you'd have your output, which is commodity based, so cubic meters of concrete. So we want to know what we're doing month in, month out, and what our progress is, but as objectively as possible. And we want to make sure that we avoid, you know, percent spent or percent, percent complete, you know, wherever possible. Um, so using the data, so the project controls manager, you know, is working with the planning teams, working with um, the engineers on site, is working with the project leadership and commercial, pulling in all this data. So what do we what do we look at month in month out? Well, we're comparing our earned value with our costs. So we compare earned value achieved. So what physical progress have I made every month against my actual cost at multiple levels? Now this can be as high level as a project group summary. So in a project, for example, you know, area A or area B or east zone or west zone, or it can be as detailed as at a cost code or an activity level. Um, we're, re we're really looking at an indicator there um, as part of earned value called the cost performance index, so uh, CPI, which is essentially a ratio of your earned value divided by your actual cost, or earned over burned, as I'd like to say. So it really that tells us in terms of our ratio how much we're earning in proportion to how much we're spending. So from that simple mathematics, you can see that if we're earning less than we're spending, either at a cost code level or at a project level, there's a, there's a likelihood that we will go over budget if we continue at that, at that rate. So that's typically where we see CPI values of less than one. So CPI of less than one is bad. If we're earning in line with what we're spending, it means that you know we're earning as much, we're making as much progress as we're spending. So my CPI is going to be you know close to one or one, and and that's good. We're on track. And anything greater than one means we're making more progress than we're spending. We're getting more value out of things, you know, on the project. So our CPI of being greater than one 
is a likelihood that we will finish uh, under budget. So we, we look at that CPI at a cost code level and at a project level um, month in, month out. So it really is, it's a ratio of value of work performed compared to spend. Um, and we use, a, we use the indicator as well, cost variance, which is um, our earned value minus our actual cost, as a guide to our project forecasting. So if we're forecasting a positive uh, or a gain in a particular um, area or project, but our cost variance is indicating otherwise, then we know, you know that something's not quite right and we can dig a little bit deeper. And as an extension of that, we also look at percentage cost and percentage earned. And roughly, you know, they should be in line with each other. We should be spending as much as we're earning. And if it's not, then we need to understand what the reasons are for that. We also look at our earned value compared with our plan value. So our plan value typically is derived from our baseline estimate or our, or our baseline budget, time phased against our baseline uh, program. Um, so our baseline program will give us our uh, early start and early finish dates for all of our activities on the project. And that's typically, um, we would associate all of our baseline costs against the baseline program and time phase that accordingly. So that gives us our month in, month out plan value um, uh, or plan values on our histogram, which we can use as a reference point to see whether we are achieving um, what we planned. And this gives us an independent check of our schedule performance on a volume of works basis. So um, the SPI or the schedule performance index works in a very similar way. So it's a ratio of what, I, what I'm earning against what I've planned. So, you know, on a visual histogram that really tells us, OK, have we achieved our plan over the last few months? This is my challenge ahead. Can we meet that challenge or is a step change required or do I need to resequence or change my plan? So the earn value management system, once it's set up, once it's robust, we've got some good data in there and we can see how we're progressing month in, month out. It's a really good tool to understand A, where we've been and B, where we have to go and C, can we meet that challenge um, going into the future? So um, the journey at John Holland. Um, so about 18 months ago, um, we decided to embark on a journey where we would be implementing earned value management and project controls approach across all of our projects, regardless of industry sector. And this is basically the snapshot of that. So we've got 30 projects set up across the infrastructure, building and rail uh, business units um, over the last 18 months uh, with a value of, value of um, greater than $10 billion. And, and that's growing. So, um, you know, that's where we've got earned value management implemented. So from the small to the mega, we've, we've covered that with, with a consistent approach. Um, we've built the capability across the organization of 20 plus um, project controls and earned value management experts across the organization. So there's a really good cohort there with a lot of experience from different sectors. Um, so we've spent the time in, in building up our people um, and, and um, really driving, um, you know, earned value management across the business. And, you know, the most important thing is that the leadership commitment has been, you know, 100%. It's been fantastic all the way from um, the ownership of John Holland right down to the senior management and leadership group, the executives and project leaders, project managers, and, and you know, also senior project engineers and site engineers. So it really, that's been, you know, the most important aspect of, of the success. And, um, you know, we've come a really long way and I'm very proud of, you know, how far we've come at John Holland in the earned value space. Um, now, in, in terms of, you know, the elements of, um, you know, implementing earned value management system, we all know as project controls practitioners that you need a robust and, and a really good system. So I'd like to acknowledge uh, the support and uh, also the, um, you, know, the, you know, all of the uh, guidance and, and also the partnership of Control Pro. So we've selected uh, Control Pro as our standard project controls and earned value system for all projects. So this is mandated across the business. Um, the great thing about Control Pro, it's a, it's a cloud based online tool, um, very easy to implement, quick to learn, um, you know, the learning curve is not that steep and, you know, project controls professionals find it to be quite a, 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 you know, useful, robust and very easy to use tool and it's giving us all that we need in terms of our key earned value metrics, um, gives us flexibility and scalability on how we report and also visibility across our whole organisation. So, um, you know, big shout out to Control Pro. If you haven't um, been by their booth um, downstairs, I'd encourage you to do so and have a chat to those guys. So um, they've been really good and a real partner for us in this journey. 
Um, so mega projects. So we've been rolling this out on, on several mega projects that we've been working on in, in, in this region. Um, and typically we're defining uh, mega projects as greater than a billion dollars um, and over. And typically, you know, three to five years in, in duration. They can be longer, of course. And the value, uh, value, of course, is really now creeping up into the two and, you know, multi-billion dollar values. Um, but, you know, the point remains the same, that in mega projects providing objective data, and the key word there is objective, um, to challenge our delivery teams is really critical. So understanding, you know, what's been achieved to date and, you know, what do we have to achieve going forward? And really understanding the, the month in, month out, spend and earn targets that are required. And, you know, of course, as we all know, delivering a mega project or any project is highly dependent on achieving those targets. So are we making the requisite progress every month? And are we tracking well in terms of cost? So, um, and that's sustained over a long period of time. So, you know, we're, you know this has become extremely critical to, to our mega projects and, and success. So our implementation approach, so I'm sure you've seen this um, diagram in various shapes and guises many times. So the three key elements to, to our implementation process have been, you know, the systems obviously, um, the process, but you know, at the heart of it, the most important part of um, the implementation process for us has been our people. And effectively, you know, getting that buy-in at an executive leadership level and driving it through at you know project by project at a project leadership level um, and then also at the team level where we've got our engineers doing great work on site you know and getting them to have the discipline to measure their work and to you know drive positive outcomes i think that's been the most critical factor in, in our success so the people have been you know it's been really critical um, and above that, a, a layer above, you've got the process. So you've got to have a, a really strong, robust project controls plan and a consistent work breakdown structure and cost breakdown structure that aligns together and brings together scope, cost and time all in the one platform. Um, you know, in terms of progress measurement, you know, we don't want to um, approximate. We don't want to have subjective measurements like percent spent or percent complete. We are really driving home the fact that we need to have objective progress measurement. So let's measure your quantities, guys, and let's, you know, get that information, that data coming month in, month out. And of course, having a clearly defined month end process where all of the key stakeholders, you know, the project controls manager, the planning lead, um, you know, commercial um, and uh, engineers, they're all aligned and they're working towards the same goal. And above that process layer is the systems layer. So, you know, typically, you know, in most companies, you'd have a financial or an ERP system, which has your budgets, your actuals, and you do your forecasting in as well, and, and your change management. Um, in John Holland, we use uh, a system called PCR that does all that. Um, planning and scheduling, you know, typically within the construction industry is Primavera P6, and that's no different at John Holland. Um, so that's got all of your, your time information, your baseline program, as well as your, your target program that you update every month. And then we've got our earned value management system, which is Control Pro, which brings together all of these different facets. And of course, you know, quantity tracking, um, you know, typically um, we, we don't want to change the way that engineers are measuring their work. Um, and some engineers may have, you know, sp spreadsheets and templates that they're using to measure quantities. You know, we don't want to change that or we don't want to disrupt their workflow too much. So what we do is we, we input what they do in their Excel spreadsheets back into Control Pro to give us a, a measurement of the quantity. So we're, we're pulling in um, our financial information, our dates information from P6 and our quantities, and we're just bringing it all together and calculating our earned value metrics. So that's typically been the, the implementation process and you know the, the elements of implementation for us. And digging a little bit deeper, um, you know, having early engagement of project controls, as you all will know, is critical. Um, you know, it's really important that we're involved, you know, from the tender stage. We're understanding the link between cost and schedule, um, you know, and, you know, program and estimate. You know, it's very important that we all have a say in, you know, the cost code structure, standardization of cost codes, um, you know, how we're going to measure our key quantities on the project. So early engagement of project controls is really imperative. Um, and having a dedicated project controls team. Um, so whether that's a project controls manager, um, cost engineers, uh, planners, um, you know, having them drive the data for the project and own that, own that data is, is, is very important. 
And of course, you know, our senior in project leadership, they must understand EVM and the value that it brings, um, you know, believe in the data and endorse it throughout the project because that's how, you know, effective decision making, you know, can be made. That's how they can use this data to, to mitigate any potential risks and also act upon it early so that there's time to address those issues as well. And of course, having you know, correct integration of cost code structure, estimate and program also, that consistency of data is also essential to success. So um, the way that we, uh, we implement on mega projects, we typically break down one big mega project, oh my apologies, one big mega project into individual sub projects. So each sub project you know, will contain its relevant cost codes, activities, budgets, dates, and objective progress measures. Um, you know, we really need to make sure that we have a, a clear link with the program so that we've got accurate time phasing on the project and you know, that our plan values are robust and accurate. Um, we also want to utilize metadata effectively, you know, to enable generation of different filters and reporting lenses. So I'll, I'll get into that in another slide um, that's coming up. Um, but using metadata and breaking down a, a huge mega project into, um, you know, smaller sub projects is, is really essential to managing this in an efficient way. Um, just a quick comment on, on design. Now, the importance of design. So now what we found over doing this over the last 18 months and, and through many years as well is, you know, the, the design phase really on a construction project can make or break the project. So it's really critical to accurately um, measure design and objectively measure it as well in terms of progress. So, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of feedback from PMs and, you know, frustrated PMs saying, oh, look, how can we how can we measure design, you know? Uh, we don't have the ability, we're just gonna measure it by cost. And, you know, that's, that's typically not a good way to do things. So what we, what we found is that we adopt a, you know, a weighted stage gate approach for our design packages and deliverables and track each design package or design deliverable through various stage gates. And each stage gate would have an appropriate weighting um, as agreed uh, by the project. You know, so typically you can have, you know, four gates or something like that. You'd have your, your preliminary design, your, your um, detailed design, your final design, and your issued for construction. And as a deliverable goes through that life cycle or that process, it'll earn value along the way, um, given the weighted. So um, Control Pro helps us to do that as well. Um, and we can apply weighted stage gates and rules of credit to track uh, design effectively. And what we found in our experience is, um, you know, if design goes off the rails, it's a, you know, and if it's identified early, that's the best chance of getting the project back on track otherwise you know um, design as we all know will have um, long-term impacts in terms of you know effect on procurement activities and also then construction so it's really important that we get design right so just going into that further and the overall structure, how we structure our earn value system. So typically in terms of a level of detail, we have some rules of thumb. So for, for $1 billion of, of project, we're talking approximately 1,000 cost codes. So that can be more, that can be less. Um, around 2,000 control pro activities. So um, recalling back to my earlier, earlier, earlier on in the presentation where I said we split out um, each cost code in Control Pro into a number of um, measurable activities so we can really uh, drive quantity measurement at an activity level. So there's typically around 2,000 activities in Control Pro, which is a medium level of detail for that a project that size. And we've typically got around 15,000 to 20,000 activities in Primavera P6, um, which is um, which for, for, a, for a billion for per billion dollar of project. So it's really about making sure that a we are capturing the right level of detail. It's not too onerous for us to update every month, that month end becomes a chore, but it's also giving us the granularity and the information that we need to make decisions objectively. So it's really about striking the right balance. And if we have a look at the way that we structure the overall project, so typically you'd have the main project at level one, right at the top. You'd have a high level project group um, sitting below that. Um, and below the project group, you'd have, you'd have your control account, which is equivalent to your cost codes and your financial system. And then you'd break out each cost code into um, a small number of activities um, so that you can adequately measure earn value and progress from a quantity perspective. And if we're using a stage gate approach for design, you may have a number of stage gates or tasks underneath that uh, to measure your design process. So typically that's the structure that we employ um, you know, at John Holland for our projects. So I was talking about metadata earlier, and you know metadata is really important for us because when we um, we want to be able to slice and dice 
and filter our data in a number of different ways. You know, we've got standalone projects, we've got projects with JVs, alliances, um, you know, there's every project is complex, it's broken down by area or phase or discipline. We want to be, we, we want to have granularity on how we're tracking against all of those parameters. So what we, what we normally do as part of the, an implementation of EVM, um, we apply as much metadata as we can. Um, Control Pro gives you up to nine user-defined fields, which we use um, in a standard way that's been agreed across the business um, to break out or to provide metadata um, across those nine user-defined fields. So we can slice and dice um, and provide different reporting lenses. So we're really trying to filter out the noise to really understand what are our month in, month out targets. Because if you think of a, a mega project, you know, you'll get a very detailed histogram and, and, and a, a really big picture of how your project's performing. But what if I just want to see how my, you know, east zone is performing as compared to my west zone? Or what if, or what if I want to see how my procurement's going, you know, or my civil works or my mechanical works? So applying metadata can really help me get to the bottom and really isolate out the noise and get to the bottom of the issues and have a look at my histogram and my S-curve. So as I mentioned there earlier, you know, we can generate um, earned value histograms and S-curves for um, sub, by sub-projects, so by, so by a sub-project and looking at sub-projects in isolation, by functional discipline, by activity, um, by responsible person, so by cost code owner as well, um, or for alliance in JV projects by, by partner, JV partner, alliance partner. And there's other criteria and filters that we can use as well. So it's all about filtering out the noise to really get to the, get to the main message. And every month, um, typically in terms of month-end process, uh, we update our EVM system. So we've got Control Pro there in the middle, um, which is pulling in all of our existing information. So uh, we're getting our cost, costs from actual cost to date and our forecast final cost and any budget movements from our financial system. We've got our time, our, early, our, um, our actual and forecast dates coming from our updated P6 program that is issued out every, every fortnight or every month. Uh, we've got progress coming from our engineers uh, on site, measuring their work from a quantities perspective. And we've got, it, we've got our contingency values coming in as well from our financial system. So um, all, of that, all, of those, all of that information helps us to generate our dynamic dashboards, calculate our EV metrics, and also um, you know, understand where we are in terms of earned versus planned and earned versus cost. Now you'll see there that there's hours as well flagged. And now we, Control Pro does do um, earned man hours as well. So we can track that. At John Holland, uh, we're not doing that at the moment, but um, there's no reason why we, we can't also track earned value in terms of man hours. So having a look at the example um, here, so this is typically what you'll see for a project uh, within Control Pro. Um, so here you can see there in, in terms of my headline data of my project overview, I have a look, and by the way, this is all dummy data. So this is not a real project, it's dummy data. Um, if you have a look at um, the, the cost budget there, excluding contingency, um, we can see what our actual cost to date is and also our forecast final cost. But if you scroll to the right, you can also see that there's, um, you know, we can see what our movement's been in the month. So I can see how much I've spent in the month versus, um, you know, what I've planned and what I've earned. So you've got the cumulative figure there, but you've also got the monthly movement. I've got my contingency here. So my contingency budget and my contingency remaining. And so I can see whether I'm drawing down on contingency or, or building resilience in the project. And I've got a final uh, position for my project, uh, which is inclusive of contingency. And then I can see my earned and my planned value. So my earned value is basically quantity driven, it's objective, and it's really my progress to date on my project. And I can also have a look at um, what I planned for that same period. So, um, and I can also see what my earned and planned values were for that month. And that leads us into the top right hand corner, which is our performance gauges. So I can see what my percent spend is on the project compared to my percent earned compared to my percent planned. And that's where I was saying that, um, you know, we really want to be in line with our percent spent versus our percent earned on a month in month out basis and also percent planned as well. Um, and that gives us our two indicators, so CPI and SPI. So CPI being our ratio of earned value over actual cost, that tells us how we're tracking in terms of our CPI performance and SPI our earned divided by our planned. 
Um, you can see there here in the corner, you've got a historical trend bar as well. So because Control Pro is a periodic system, um, you know, we um, lock away the data once it's all finalized at month end and we roll over to the next period. So historical data is tracked on a rolling month by month basis. So we can see exactly what our CPI trend is. Are we going up or down? Um, is there a downward trajectory? Um, and what can we do about it? Or, you know, or are we tracking well? Are we improving? Um, you can also see in the black line that we've got another metric called schedule variance, which is in weeks. So we're not track we, we are also tracking schedule variance in, in dollars, so our earned value minus our plan value, but we're also tracking schedule variance in weeks, and um, that gives us a variance of how far ahead or behind we are in terms of baseline schedule, but using weeks as a, as a unit. So um, I'll get to that um, in the presentation a little bit. Um, as part of the project overview, we also can generate our earn value dashboard here. So this essentially gives us on the bars our, our plan value month in, month out. So that's our um, estimate or our baseline budget um, time phased against our baseline program. So we know exactly how much we need to achieve in terms of work month in, month out. Uh, the pink bars there are our actual costs. So what are we spending um, for, the, uh, for the work that we're doing? And the green is our progress. So what earned value are we achieving uh, month in, month out? Um, we can also see there that in the purple, we've got our earned value to go or, or our, um, or our you know, forecast to complete in terms of earned value or progress. And that's typically derived from the work that's remaining, time phased against our target program. So that gives us an, an, an indication, an expectation of the challenge ahead in terms of work. Um, the black line there are any um, uh, budget movements or budget changes. So Control Pro also tracks how your budgets, uh, you know, and, and your final cost, your reported final cost, how that's tracking over a period of time. So you've got all the information you need as a project leader or as a, or as a senior executive in terms of how your project's performing. And this one here as well, what we provide is we provide, a, like it's, this is like a 30,000 foot view of how your project's going. So we've got our project here um, in the project overview. Uh, we've got our um, project split up into project groups, so high level groups. Um, if you recall back to the previous slide, we had a, our structure, so you had a main project, our project group. So that's like a high level breakdown of how your project's um, performing um, and, and, and how, the, how your project's set up. And underneath each of your uh, project groups, you'll have your individual control accounts or cost codes underneath those. Each project group will have a cost budget coming from your baseline budget or your baseline estimate um, and any budget movements that might, might be occurring. So that's all coming from our financial system. We've got a percent by cost as well to see what we are in terms of percent spent, how far we are in terms of percent spent. Our actual cost to date is coming also from our financial system. So again, just the key point of we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're using existing data and we're leveraging off of that in, in terms of what every project's producing anyway monthly. And we've got our final forecast cost also coming from our financial system and a gain or loss position for that particular group. Um, our earned value achieved. So again, objective, you know, being driven by our engineers on site, measuring their work. So what is our progress to date? And my percentage uh, complete by EV or my percentage progress by EV. So, you know, at the end of every month, I'll have a look at the percentage by cost and the percentage by EV. And if there are major differences or discrepancies, you know, we dig a little bit deeper and understand why, why that's happening. We also have our cost variance, which is our a delta between what we've earned against what we've spent and our CPI, which again is our ratio of earned over actual. Uh, at, at a group level, but also at an overall project level. And I've got my traffic lights here as well for my CPI. So um, anything that is below 0.9, it will give you a red. Anything between 0.9 and 1 will give you a, an amber. And anything above 1 will give you a green. So that's typically the, the statusing that we use. Um, and you also see the arrow there, the, the, um, the downward arrow and the upward arrow. That's just giving an indication of whether your CPI has moved lower or higher as compared to last month. So it gives you a, a monthly trend there as well. Um, our plan value, of course, is our time phase budget against our time phase P6 program. And our schedule variance there is effectively our earned value achieved minus our plan value. Um, negative being bad, positive being good. 
um, our SPI, same logic as the CPI, and the traffic lights, same as well. So you can see there that between those three screenshots that you've seen there, the overview headline data, uh, the, the S-curve and histogram, and then this project overview, we can, we can provide our senior management or everything on just one page, and that gives them a bird's eye view of how their project's performing. And of course, I should mention that um, you can actually click into each group and go down into the requisite level of detail. So you can go at a cost code level or at an activity level if you wish. So it's scalable. You can be as high level as you want or you can dig down into the detail by exception if need be. Um, this is our performance summary dashboard. So this is very similar to the dashboard uh, before, but it also overlays uh, cost as well on that. So we've got my CPI and SPI to date. So what I've achieved to date so far, what I have to go. And it gives me all of my indicators there as well. Percent spent, excluding and including contingency, percentage earned and percentage planned. And I've also got my S curve there, but this time you can see there that the difference is we've got an orange curve there and orange bars there on a, on, on a monthly basis. And that's typically our forecast cost to complete um, uh, that's been time phased. And typically your earn value to go curve should match the shape um, of your forecast cost to complete curve if the data is well aligned. Um, one of the real benefits of, you know, instituting objective measurement on our projects is the ability to track quantities. So here we have an example where we're tracking concrete in cubic meters on one of our projects. Um, so we can see, um, you know, how many, how many quantities, how many cubic meters of concrete we budgeted to do or, or to, uh, to pour uh, on the project, um, what we've done to date, and also what we have to complete. And that's also phased over time against our, our P6 program. So this gives us the ability to really, number one, measure what we're doing month in, month out, see if you know, we're slipping um, ahead or behind of schedule, um, and really um, you know, ascertain, well, what we estimated, you know, well, did that happen in reality? It's just really giving us a lot of great data at a quantity level uh, and not just a cost level. It's giving us that information of, this is what we expected to achieve, and this is the work that we've actually done. So um, you can track um, all um, at, at a quantity level for, for either key quantities or any, any commodity that you've got in the system that you've set up as part of the project. So yeah, really powerful stuff. And you can see there, that's our, that's our histogram and S-curve there. So we've got our baseline quantities monthly um, in the blue, our forecast quantities in the purple, uh, so what's to come, and actuals in green. And again, the baseline um, cumulative is based on our baseline program and then our... Um, our purple curve is based on our um, target program. Um, as I mentioned earlier, so we can track our CPI and SPI trends as well on the project um, because it's a, 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 month, a, a it's sort of a month in month out tool um, and a historical tool that we use. Um, so we can really see how we've, we've been tracking on the project from both a CPI and an SPI perspective. Um, and earn schedule. So earn schedule anal analysis gives us greater granularity on how we're performing to schedule. Uh, so this really measures the earn value that's been achieved at this point in time and compares it to what we should have achieved um, in terms of plan value at that time period. So it gives us a schedule variance in you know units of weeks. So typically you would calculate schedule variance in dollars. It, it's simply your earn minus your plan. But really amongst all of us, I think a, a dollar value in schedule variance doesn't really give you that much information or it can be a little bit misleading uh, whereas um, you know, having your schedule variance by weeks gives, us, gives you a lot more granularity and we can do that by project group there that you can see so you can see some of the ones that are you know um, under pressure or some aspects of the project are performing well so you can break it down by each part of your project and also give a overall uh, position for your project as well whether you're on track or you know a couple of weeks behind or a couple of weeks ahead and it also tracks the schedule variance position month in month out over a period of time so it's all historically tracked for your project as well which you'll see down there so I think this slide's really important um, you know some of the leadership feedback that you know I've heard that some of my team have heard across the business you know I'll, I'll let you read that as well but you know from the general manager down to the construction manager and commercial manager you know they've all been you know just really blown away by the data that's there at their fingertips um, and also um, you know just how much visibility and granularity they're receiving and and you know they're 
they're able to see on their projects. So, you know, from our general manager, you know, we're committed to making earned value management a success, um, all the way down to our construction manager, you know, who was typically, you know, a little bit resistant at first. Oh, look, I don't know if this is, you know, extra work or whatever it is. But now, you know, he's saying to us, you know, he relies heavily on the earned value report, you know, to tell him the clear picture on how his project's performing. So we've really seen a huge transformation in the organisation over the last 18 months. And, you know, whilst there, you know, we've still got plenty of you know good work to do it's been really pleasing to see uh, the journey that um, we've been on and and you know I really believe that you know we're one of the leaders in this space as well so I'll just give you a, a quick second to read some of those comments Um, so some of the lessons that we've learnt um, on this journey, um, you know, really people engagement and, you know, buy-in is really the most important factor to success. You know, you can have, you know, robust data, you can have a great system, but if you don't get that buy-in, it's really hard to get this off the ground. Um, early engagement of project controls is critical. The earlier, the better. Um, and close collaboration with the, with, oops, sorry, close, close collaboration with the team is critical as well. So it's really important, um, you know, that we get our project controls people, our planners and schedulers right in there with the team. Uh, the senior and project leadership must endorse and understand EVM, believe in it and act upon it so that, you know, we, we can use EVM to make, you know, right decisions and in time. Um, having an accurate and robust link to, the, to both the estimate and the program is critical because the estimate gives you your scope information, the program gives you the dates. Um, so it's really important to bring those elements together along with the cost. It's really important that we have a robust link back to the estimate as well as the program. Um, and of course, having said that, you know, having an appropriate level of detail in terms of tracking progress is really vital to efficiency. We don't want to have 10,000 activities that we're tracking every month because that's just onerous and it, and it falls over. We want to have an appropriate level of detail that gives us, you know, the right information, um, but also it's conducive and it's efficient to update every month. Um, and we want to use objective measurement, so quantities tracking and tracking our quantities um, on site um, to track progress. And, and of course, using the weighted stage gate approach for design is also a real, a real lesson learnt for, for us. Um, and having a clear understanding of our month in, month out targets in terms of earn value and spend, um, you know, really will un you know, help us to understand what we've achieved and what we've got to go. So with that, I'd like to thank you for, for coming to my talk and I hope that was of some value. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. And yeah, very happy to take some questions from, from people as well. Um, yep, you, you, yourself there? Subcontractors, subcontractor data, sure. Um, so, um, so typically um, how we utilize that data is all of that subcontractor data, so progress claims, certifications, payments, all of that is actualized in our financial system. So we're pulling that data um, every month from our financial system uh, to give, give us our, our cost to date information. So what we have spent on for our subcontract. Ah, it's quantities, right, right. Yep. So in terms of quantities, um, you know, the, the responsible engineers for that particular package or that particular part of work, they have to, um, they're responsible for liaising with their subcontractor and making sure that they're really understanding what's been performed. Also, um, you know, being on site, looking at the work performed, inspecting the work performed and measuring that at a, at a site level as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. No worries. Uh, yep. Yourself? My, one of my questions was your uh, phase gating in for the design phase. And we also do a similar approach for the design, but even including that, we still have problems for the quality of yep. the, the actual design documents. We could phase gate all you want, but the problem is if before that, during that phase gate, there's a issue at that time, you didn't think that was a problem, but yep. after there, it starts impacting the downstream design. Uh, what sort of steps are you taking or, or thinking about in terms of potentially rectifying this issue? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really great question. Um, I think what, what I've seen in terms of 
um, you know, some of the design um, information that we get. A lot of it can be quite subjective and approximate. We've, we've even had um, some corrections in future months. Basically, earned value was overstated in the previous month. So we're trying to make it as objective as possible in terms of, okay, you know, have these, deliv have these deliverables or has this design package, has it progress through the through the next stage through the next gate and is there you know some evidence behind that as well and really working closely with the design team to really quantify that very closely but it is a challenge you're right yeah so just, it's very, I, like, I can't imagine how that would be done yep. they don't even if i could collaborate with the engineering as much as i want yep. but if they they think it's good but uh, one month later it totally yep that's apart. right yeah, um, I've, I've actually got my GM here, Nick, uh, John Holland. Nick, have you seen something similar um, or uh, what's your t take on that, Ben? Sure. Um, so there's two things. One is that um, the earned value can't progress past that design stage, so it's, it stalls where it is. So if you get, if you get that churn where it um, gets re-reviewed and all that sort of stuff, it just stops there um, and the hours get burned, so the CPI will change. Also, there's that gap between producing final design and the next milestone is issued for construction. So we always hold back five to 10% of value for that process. And that's, that's really where it goes around the houses. And in practical terms, what we find is that that gives us the, be the, the correct big picture emerging in terms of where our design really is genuinely at. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Nick, no worries. Anyone else? Yep, yes, yourself. Uh, thanks for nice presentation and very My nice pleasure. information. Uh, uh, we are, uh, I'm from Siemens Gamesa. At Siemens Gamesa projects, EPC project, we are doing exactly the same as you explained. But uh, the difference is uh, I'm doing this directly in P6. Okay. Uh, yep. One question I have for you is, uh, as you know, the CPI and SPI is very sensitive to the accuracy of the actual cost. Yes. Normally, yep. actual cost is not just in time. At the end of the month, you approach the finance, uh, financial team and asking for the actual cost, uh, which may be one to two months behind the current date. Yes. Because of unpaid invoice and un unpaid claim. Uh, how you handle this? Because sure then CPI come wrong. Sure, so if you recall in the um, overview uh, page where you had the traffic lights and the project groups, we had two columns there, so percent by cost and percent by earned. So yes, there are cases on some projects where actual costs through some subcontractor or supplier or another third party may be a little bit late. However, what we're also using as part of our analysis is the quantities or the work that's been earned. So if I see, or if the project controls manager sees that there's a large discrepancy between you know, you know what we've earned in terms of the progress achieved and the cost. So we've we've done the work, you know we've 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 claimed the progress. We can verify that the work's been done, but there's a bit of a gap or there's a hole there in terms of our actual cost. Then that's a prompt for us to you know raise an accrual in our financial system. So this is a great tool to help us verify our subcontract cost accruals or our cost accruals for the project. So we typically look at percentage by cost and percentage by earned at a, at a group level first, but then we dive into the detail and we look at it from a cost code level or, a, or an activity level. And if there are big gaps in favor of earned value, then we know and, and we can verify that the work's been done, then we can trace back and work with um, our, our subcontractor and commercial finance to, to make sure that we accrue those costs in, in, um, in the financial system as well. May I ask you a second question as well? Yeah, sure. Yep. Uh, as you know, the, the, the backbone of all this calculation is the weightage you assign to the activity, okay? Yes. This weightage is co uh, coming from the dollar or man hour or whatever mechanism you decide. The important thing is the weightage you assign to the activity should be accurate. That's exactly okay? right. Yeah. Um, in the Middle East, a uh, huge construction company normally, instead of assigning the weightage coming from the dollar, uh, using man hours. Sure. Uh, do you believe uh, for the contra uh, huge contract uh, contractor companies like John Holland, using the man hours could be better option rather than uh, using the dollar as a weightage? How do you think about this? Oh, sure. Uh, that's a, that's another good question. So, so typically, I mean, what what are we trying to to drive home here? We're trying to drive home, you know, firstly integration of cost, time, and scope together, um, and we're also trying to make sure that we are objective as possible in terms of progress. So, this is not 
a financial tool as such, even though the unit that we're using is dollars, it's not a financial tool. It's, it's really a, a progress tool and to see how much progress we've made. And then yes, we can compare with what we've spent and what we planned, but it's typically a progress measurement. So whether that, whether we use man hours or dollars, the principles are the same. Um, and you know, what we find is because most of our projects are uh, subcontracted projects we find that um, using earned man hours um, you know we, we, we're not at that stage yet we're using dollars um, but certainly we have the capability and um, you know we, we have the ability to track man hours as well uh, but we typically are using um, currency or dollars because it's a convenient or, or you know it, it's a relatable unit of measure that we can mm -hmm. use that's consistent across the whole project um, Nick did you want to add anything to that at all um, I guess I'd say that Obviously, but you know, if you're going to use just earned man hours, how do you apply that to your procurement items and your subcontracts and all that sort of thing? So, so yes, it can be done. You can actually break earned value back into earned man hours and assign an equivalent man hours to your quarry products or other materials if you wanted to. And I've seen that done before. But I, I, I think that it tends to lose a bit of meaning then. So we don't see any reason to do it. Um, but. As Sangra said, you know, conceptually, you know, earned man hours are earned dollars. It's just a common unit to break everything back to. And that's the important concept here. Um, whether it's widgets, dollars, man hours, kind of doesn't matter. It's kind of, it's just got to be related, uh, relatable. So, you know, we stick to earned value, but, you know, we could do earned man hours or other things if we wanted to. Yeah. So I have one here. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay, so you mean uh, budget vari budget variations or changes? Yep, changes typically. So um, as I mentioned earlier, you know our source of truth for our data that we are having is in its various you know systems. So we're using our ERP system to track that. So um, if there are variations or budget changes or you know whatever change changes there are in, in change management, yeah, additional scope that if that's captured in our financial tool it's our job to be one-to-one -one with that so we bring that in we bring that data into control pro as well and control pro you can also it does have a change management functionality so you can see at a cost code level how your cost code has been progressing month in month out in terms of has there been any movements to forecast have actual cost to date been increasing um, has the budget moved so on and so forth so we have that visibility as well across so across uh, control pro no I have worries. a question yeah, uh, yes yeah, yeah. Hi. so uh, do you have the same visibility of data to the client as well or just for the John Hall and internal or the, for the JVs as well? Do you are giving the same access to them so client have the same visibility like if the, we are lagging behind in the progress and the client should know like we are definitely lagging behind in the progress. So yeah, I mean, look, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a collaborative, you know, open tool, uh, you know, the, the, da the data. And, uh, you know, we, we do look at, you know, um, providing that, you know, providing yeah, those indicators. Yeah, but the data yeah. is coming from the contractor, right? How yes. the client is assessing your data, like its accuracy of the data. So how are you giving the client access that they can assess your data is accurate or not? Yeah, so, um, you know, basically on that, um, you know, we do provide, you know, monthly dashboards, monthly reports to the client. And, you know, we look at using Control Pro as our source of truth for the earned value data. So we generate that information out of Control Pro and, um, you know, and issue that to the project teams and also, you know, and, and also to the client as well, yeah, yeah. And the other question, like, if client asks you to make a recovery program, right, so how you change everything and you say, like, everything is on time, everything is on schedule, once you have made a recovery program, yep. at some point in time, you are on schedule, you are on budget. Okay, so you're talking about re-baseline yeah, within, exactly. within, within the yeah. system? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, if, if that is you know required then 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 we can work towards doing something like that as well the control pro yep, yep because so. micro yeah micro rebaselining yeah so so yeah having a uh, so as nick said micro rebaseline is possible as Person, well in the big yeah. projects like westconnex we have rebaselined the project like six times in like three years yep so it means every after six months we are on time we are on schedule then after yep. every six months we are on time we are on schedule and the project ended in delay for like six months. Again. Right, right, yep. Well, it's all about having a valid reference point, right? If you're not having the right reference point, then your indicators are misleading. 
So it's about making sure that we've got the That's right what reference I'm point. Talking as about well. John Holland because John Holland sure. was involved in the West Connex. Sure. So how you're well, like working towards making everything like if we are delayed, and you say we are, and well, you can tell you the reflection of the project at any point in time. Yep. But like how you're recovering it, like to get the project done on time. Yeah, we can talk offline about that as well. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. All right. Looks like Thanks. I'm up. No worries.